Most people know all this, but if you don't, you, you know, you have to bear with me. I now have got my back turned to the screen. So if I'm showing something and you can't see it, or you prefer to see the top, or you prefer to see the other side, let me know, because I've got a camera that I can adjust things around accordingly. So from this side, which I think is all right. So um, we all know the basics of how it's how it set up and this is the platen, and you can adjust the angle of it and all that sort of stuff. Um, this has got the um, optional honing wheel uh, uh, set up, which screws in on uh, the end of the shaft that's uh, down here inside. Um, some of you may have that, some of you may not have that. Um, the, uh, oh, got the other screw on it. That's why I can get it off. The, um, yeah, the end of the shaft. You can get a pigtail uh, thread that goes on the end of the shaft and you can put a, a buffing mop on it. What they don't tell you is that if you have one of these on and you want to change the belt, uh, you have to take this off in order to get the side cover off. And as we know, the side cover is always on for health and safety all the time. <laughs> so the way to overcome that problem, tip number one, Cut a hole in the <laughs> slot at the bottom, yeah. uh -huh. uh, and then so neat. Yeah, good you idea. Can just put it on and take it and off. And your warranty is revoked. I did it at twelve months on one day. Um, <laughs> so uh, my system is screwed to the bench because I just don't want it to skitter backwards and forwards. Um, I with belt bench grinders. I've when I didn't want to bolt it down. I've put um, a nut and a bolt through and ground the, the, the bolt to a, a V, to a sharp bit, so that I can spike it to a surface so that you can lift it up and move it away. That's an option which people might want to consider because this thing isn't going to kick around too much. But my worry is, is that if you're pressing on this, that it could tip over. I don't think it will, but you could. Um, I must admit, I find that it, it moves very easily. Um, but I haven't decided exactly where to put it yet. So I just clamp it. I clamp it. Well, this was, was screwed on over there, but I, I, mm. I didn't want to ruin my nice bench. So um, I got a like a T, you know, what do you call it? Butcher's block job here. So I screwed it to that. Um, tip number two, catch your um, metal filings with magnets. This is a little magnetic tray. Um, it goes on there, stays put, doesn't come off. Uh, oh, I've got a series of little rare earth magnets stuck all around the place. Uh, and that catches pretty well about 70, 90% of the dust rather than it going everywhere. And then oh, I good just idea. vacuum it up or knock it off every now and again. So that's tip number two. Um, the issue of your uh, tool knocking the... Um, uh, motor the, the motor body uh is is overcome simply by fiddling with the angle till you get an angle that works for you i reckon that's at about 30 degrees if it's too flat it clonks if it's too vertical i think the handle knocks at the bottom depending upon how long the handle is that the dynamics will be slightly different for each piece how um, easy is it to change the angle malcolm you um, have an Allen key. Allen key, yeah, which comes with it. Uh, yeah. And uh, you've got one bolt. Hold on, let's go back to the other camera. Uh, yeah, yeah, got yeah. it. Did that change cameras, did it? Yeah, it did. yeah, yep. yeah, it's fine. Uh, so you've got one here and one rather awkwardly around the back, which you have to do through the belt. And that bolt at the back. Uh, appears and disappears depending upon the angle because it, it, it yeah so yeah. i don't bother with it so this is the only one that's nipping it up uh, I, if you don't mind i won't slacken it off and move it because All this right, is I just yeah. just at the right angle one bolt nipped up is absolutely fine um everything is of course covered with magnetic filing uh Fab, thanks that's good taking the belt off and on 
it is easier if you take the platen off, but you don't have to. Um, you can just jiggle it around uh, and off it comes. Uh, most of the belts have got an angle that suggests that you have it running in the direction uh, correctly so that this taper uh, correctly aligned. But really, with modern belts, that's a bit irrelevant because they're taped properly at the back. Days of yore, I think you might have even had a, a surface that uh, could be seen. But seeing as how the same belts are designed exactly the same size to go on the Sorby Ultimate Edge, which goes in both directions. What do you the, mean the Axminster to one? What did I say? Sorby? Yeah, I meant Axminster, so thank you. Um, then uh, it really doesn't make any difference. But I always try and align it in the suggested direction. Uh, you've got the, the ability... The wheel doesn't have arrows. Oh, sorry, the diamond belt doesn't have arrows. No, some of these don't have arrows, uh, but some do. Um, mm. So, uh, let me just see. Oh, by the way, this is a tip I got from Simon. Uh, uh, if he's, he's still on the line, Simon, somewhere? He's still there, Mr. Armson? Yeah? Or well, not, don't know. Um, these are little Velcro strap things you get from eBay. Uh, quite handy. Just strap them around, hanging things on uh, like that, you know. Um, so I keep my part-used belts uh, on these jobbies. I think they were about... 80p each from eBay for 10. Uh, so some of these come with the arrow on it. Uh, the belts that I get are usually from uh, uh, St. Austell Machinery for Wood um, because the belts there, which are made by belt makers rather than by Robert Sorby, to my mind, are equally as good and they're about half the price. I have in the past ordered some belts from a company that, makes belts <laughs> um but um uh i've forgotten who they were now uh so we can talk about belts to a blue in the face but i don't know what that one is actually that's, can you that's... just repeat the name of the uh, supplier um uh it's machinery for woods and austal they advertise on ebay and they advertise um directly uh, the prices can sometimes be more expensive on eBay than going on their own website. Um, uh, I have only ever had to adjust the uh, the rake at the top to stop the belt travelling once, uh, and that's when I've got a single 240 belt that I use uh, occasionally for a carving <laughs> tool, and that just has a, a tendency to wander. Uh, so I won't put that on because it is a bit of a fiddle. Uh, and in order to reset the angle, you um, you know fiddle with these jobbies and do them, slack them off, and then that just changes the crank angle a little bit here to stop it travelling. The only time I've ever needed to do it is when I've got one single 240 grip belt. So um, so, so the belt wasn't wasn't straight then, basically. Possibly, yeah. Well, but I mean, it stays stationary, but, but when I put it on, it, it just migrates to the inside and just rubs on the chassis down here. And if you so, turned it over, it, if you turned it round, it would have gone the other way, probably. It probably would have done, yeah. So it's not quite, but it stays stable once I've adjusted the top. Mm. Uh, but it, and then I put on all the other belts and they all travel, so I have to set it back to where it was before. So it's just the one belt. Um, Malcolm, sorry. The, the thing to bear in mind that that right hand thing that you adjust is basically a lock nut. And I found that if you only slacken that off a tiny amount, then you don't get it sort of wobbling all over the place when you're adjusting the other end nearer the black knob part. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah there's probably a knack, as you say. So um, straight grinding. We've got this platen. Um, and as you know, we've got all the different holes around the side. So for those of you that don't use them, you just slacken this off a bit. You don't even normally have to bother if that's clear enough. I know it's a little dark, this particular camera. Um, but the, the screw nut, the, the nut, the peg, the bolt with the peg end on it, I just, all, all I do is just slacken it off uh, at half a turn. Um, I don't bother to adjust this. You just, it's just got a bit, a bit of movement in there and then you can waggle it round to the different holes. 
Uh, if you want to go for um, a 20... No. That camera. If you want to go for a, a 20 or a 30 degree angle as opposed to 15, 25, 35, if you want the round number ones, then uh, the peg has to be taken out, put on the inner peg. There's two holes in this uh, arm here. And by putting it on the inner of the two holes, that mates with the uh, preset holes for 20 and 30. I'm sure it's perfectly possible that you could drill your own additional holes in here for a bespoke angle, if you have a bespoke angle that you particularly favour. Um, Can I ask you, Mark, what, the, there are three holes for the platen. No, you're on the middle one, I think. There's, you might have to be a bit more clear as to which there's, holes there's you mean. What you're taking off now, you're taking, some, taking a bolt out of a hole. There's another one a bit further up, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, they're, they're not used. They're not the plate at the back. The, 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 uh, let me just yeah you can see yeah you can see that that stud hole and that stud hole are bolts for the back it, somebody just said that they're not threaded this is the only one that's actually threaded uh, the only confusion that's potentially there is that uh are you do you put it in this hole or do you put this bolt in that hole if you put it in that hole it won't go in. So um, there is only one place that this can go in, even though it looks as if there's more than one. There isn't. There is only one. Okay. Thank you. Um, while I'm on the platen, uh, you also can have a short tool platen, which is very useful if you've got short tools. And given the fact that most of us are tight wads, um, at some point your um, that your tools will become short, or you might might actually want to sharpen a uh, hold on number three. Yeah, you might want to sharpen a um, carving tool. So uh, you buy this as a extra with a short plate, um, which allows you to then get your tool up to the plate, unlike the test I did for the uh, Axminster one where they just couldn't get, get on it at all. Um, you can, with a small tool, avoid buying that um, if it's a really dinky little tool and you've only got this by just making a small riser plate, uh, which allows you to then uh, sit the... Uh, tool on uh, above the platen on a riser plate um, there is actually a square edged plate that you can uh, that you can use for um, tools that you want to run uh, I'll make that way up uh, as a guide oh. ah. parting tool uh, for you to run up and down. Um, but you can equally use what I'll come to in a minute, which is the V-block for the spindle roughing gouge to do that. I haven't had any success with putting this on and trying to use it this way because it's still too short. So if you basically made something like that, but that just sat like that, you could probably get your small tool on Without, buy, without buying the extra piece of kit. But it's only about 15 quid or 18 quid, something like that. So as I do do a bit of carving, I thought I'd buy one. Uh, so you borrow the bolt and the peg from um, the bolt and the bolt and the peg. You borrow those from the other one. Uh, and then you pop that in so uh that's set to 15 degrees i've got a 120 grit on here which is a bit rough for a delicate old carving tool what angle is that at uh, uh, that's probably 
not any angle at all. Is that 20? That looks like that's 25. So if you pretended this was a short tool, <laughs> um, actually, have I, got a, have I got a short tool out? I didn't want to actually get the world and his wife out. Um, the short tool platform, Malcolm, is uh, nineteen pound fifty. Yeah, which is it? From Turner's retreat. Well done, thank you. I mean, in the overall scheme of things, that's affordable, I think. Um, so let me just do. Right, that's. So this is a short tool. Um... That's about all that you're going to need uh, on a wood carving tool. Um, the wheel at the bottom is designed for honing. I don't find it very successful, but honing, you hone away from you. You sharpen towards you. So um, that's why, in much part, the torment goes away from you, because it's a sharpening honing system as opposed to other ones which are more grindy so the axminster although they don't explain it the axminster the benefit of the reverse uh on the ultimate edge is that you might sharpen it towards you and then you might put on a trizec 600 or an 800 something like that for a very fine tool and then you can hone it going the other way with this system all i do is I just want to find a camera. Fine. Uh, that'll have to do. Yeah, fine. Just put it pointing down. Perfect. I can't hear you at the moment because of the machine. So, all right. So I would just burnish it like, uh, like that, uh, and it's probably too close for the auto Yeah, folk. yeah let's folk and see the mirror on it. <clears throat> Uh, now what you immediately note when you try and do that is that if you've been using this which I more typically would if I've ground up a um, if I've ground up a tool and I've ended up say it's on a 60 grit and I can't be 80 grit or 60 grit and I can't be bothered to change the belt because I've just reground the tool and I just want to get on with it I might actually get rid of the um, the burrs that you see on the inside just by waggling this around on the edge down there which does mean that this doesn't always get it's not flat any longer so uh same problem with all wheels you need to dress it so i use a grinding wheel dressing stick can i ask do, do you bother with a honing compound yes i do yeah um i use the same stuff as i use on my strops the yellow agent um that uh you use for just you know doing it that's what you get from flex cut is it yeah that's what i use yeah I've, I've got i've got a stick here uh so which camera am i that one yeah the yellowy flex uh, cut stuff so if you um look at that camera which i know is uh, it's a bit closer. You can see that having rubbed that across there, there's still a black mark in the middle. Yeah. Well, well, that's the trench. So from me having rubbed a tool up against it on a couple of occasions. So uh, just by, this is a rubbery hard compact. This is surprisingly hard. It will actually grind <laughs> and sharpen as much as it will hone. But... Um, Doing that a few more times would flatten it out, which, of course, you need it to be flat if you're going to hone a chisel. Uh, because it's going this way, you obviously need to hold your chisel underneath to hone it, um, as opposed to on the top. Uh, and you can just put a bit of compound on like that. Not terribly effective, but it, it gets a bit on there. Mm -hmm. 
You see that? Mm. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Nice. So that gives quite a nice honed edge, doesn't it? Um, it's not as accurate as any of the Tormek stuff because you're doing it by hand. So it ain't perfect, but it's you got it. It's something you can do. Now, Trevor quite uh, nicely asked about this peg getting all rough and nasty and vile, um, which it does. Uh, and uh, when you come to the... I'm going to take this off. When we come... I think we've done enough of the platen stuff, I think. Um, uh, well, you were going to come to the V-shaped thing, but you did show us that before. Okay, I'll do that, thank you. And then I'll come back to Trevor's bit about the peg. Remind me, somebody, about this when I come to do the spindle gouges. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. So, uh, which camera on? Still see. That's good. So I'll carry on with this. <coughs> So I'm now going to do a 45 degree grind. So that is the one, two, three, fourth hole. It's quite easy to find which hole it is because it's the last of a set of four. Um, so there's a, quite a big gap on the uh, side to the next one at 60 degrees. <coughs> so it makes it quite easy to find out which one it is. Uh, I think it was Chris, was it, or Matt? Uh, Chris, maybe. Cox, was it you saying about drilling in the side? to maybe get a 50 degree or a 40 degree for the 40 40 uh be interesting for you to bugger yours up and do that and let me know whether it works or not <laughs> uh was it chris he's not answered so maybe it wasn't chris you oh. malcolm you can unscrew unscrew it that goes in the holes and actually tighten it up in between the holes Yep, yeah, well done. I've actually done that and uh, for one occasion to experiment. And I put a little uh, felt pen line on the side when it was clean, uh, just so I could um, set it to an angle and then do it. I think I was doing 70 degrees because I was favouring 70 yeah. degrees as an angle for a scraper, um, a negative rake scraper. Um, but since then, I can't be bothered. I've just moved it to 60. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I scratched a line on Chris's one so we knew where the angle was. <laughs> <laughs> it was looking brand new until Matt got hold of it. But the old yep. man... <laughs> yeah. yeah, the old man got hold of it and he got really scratched up. <laughs> no, I, I've never drilled anything in the side of mine. Uh, I don't know whether that was something that Matt was suggesting, mm -hmm. but I, all we've ever done on ours is uh, just put a, a mark for the 40-40 grind. Well, I, we, I, I'm hoping that we can do grinds next month and get you to contribute a bit because I've not done a 40-40 and I don't think there's going to be time and tolerance to do it tonight because we're, we're running on. Mm -hmm. So, 45-degree um, uh, degree angle block. Um, the aim is, is that it can support you when you're actually doing the grind. Um, now, That's the Tormek doesn't have. You have to mess about with that other... Ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I find that this is only really useful at the base of the grind because uh, you have to still keep it pressed down. If you're gentle and you're just doing a little gentle dust up, then it works. But I also use it on the side. So if I just show you both, is that camera angle all right? Or do you prefer to go yeah, to that? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah go for it. Good. So... So this is a, a very flat ceramic belt. Um, I, I keep them, use them and recycle them. So when I actually put a new belt on, it grinds the hell out of these. So uh, I keep the old belts and use those and only use the new belts when I have to. Is that the 120 one? That's the 120, yeah. I've got 180s, 150s, 180s, 240s, but they get thinner and they get flimsier and they wear out more quickly. So a flat 120 works for a long while, a fresh 120 works when you really need a, to re sort of reshape a tool. You can put the 60 or 80 on and that will rapidly eat up a load of metal, but you will flatten the belt as well. So if you're going to try and take a, uh, say, a, a straight across 
a bevel grind to a long grind when you've probably got three mil of meat to take out a high speed steel tool. <clears throat> That's when I, if I get one like that from an old boy that's given up wood turning, uh, then I um, tend to uh, regrind it roughly on the white aluminium oxide uh, just to get rid of the meat and then bring it back to the here. Perfectly good for the 60 grit to do it, but you'll knock out a three pound belt if you're not careful. So I just did that in the flat. I find that movement, which you hopefully could see, much more controllable because you can press down and pull in to the block and it does not lift off. Here, uh, the tendency is for it to lift off and flail around. So although this is useful, it's more useful for doing uh, like a micro bevel grind or a straight across spindle gouge, a straight across bowl gouge. Uh, because this is being a bit bigger, it tends to pull out. And if you do the really big one, which I won't get to because it's on the other side of the cables, the big version of this with an inch and a half flue, then you really need to do it against this block. Um, that block is also what you will use um, to, not that because that's the wrong angle, but to give you, um, you know, a square angle if you've got a um, box scraper. Use it on your parting tools as well. Parting mm -hmm. tools, yeah, here's a box scraper and with a, with a probably a 60 or is it a 45? That's got a 45 on the one and probably about a 20 or 30 on the top on the other. So that, uh, that's a sharpen of the bevel. This was used, that's a sharpen of the bevel on the one side and then 25 degree on that side. Of course, you have to decide which side is your negative rake and do the final sharpen in the correct order, which I always get wrong. That's now sharpened. So that's that's all it takes, you know, those few seconds, and that is now, like, cut your finger sharp, that is. That's, what, that's why we all like the people that get used to it, love it. Um, so I've done that a bit, really, haven't I, now? Um, so I'll take that off. Malcolm. Yep. The um the pattern that you've got there. Yeah. Um, Chris's one when he got it new. That for the rest of the machine being a lovely machine and well finished, that was very rough. It was rough milled, and we had to work that a little bit, fettle it a bit to get it to slide good. Yeah, and, I, I I did. I had to do a little bit of fettling in there. Yeah. My one at work that I made them by me. I had to do the same. But also I found I was grinding a lot of woodworking chisels on it and it needed to be perfectly flat and level with the belt. And I actually had to take the platen off the side metal plate and lightly adjust the top of the side that's yeah, in your left hand. Yeah, because the angle of the, the plate was actually not perfectly square to the belt. Well, that's dreadful. That's really mm. bad. I fraction out and it didn't take a lot of work, but it was visibly out so when i'm grinding a normal um normal wood chisel normal bevel edge chisel you could see the angle across the end of the chisel i think you must have had a friday night one i mean it's possible yeah. this it's... is two machines that needed sort of a little bit of um fettling if you will a bit of love yeah um, well but... i mean it could be that it's the case on others it's, i haven't noticed it um and but then you, you're obviously more forensic with what you're doing because you're doing it like per properly. So, uh, but this, I, I have to have any trouble with it. Do give us a shout. I'm more than happy to help them um, sort it out. It didn't take a lot of work. It just took a little bit of thinking about. Because this is milled out. You can see the milling marks on it. And yeah. obviously, if that's not been finished properly, I also found that this particular uh, jig. It might even better see it. I don't know, but the uh, the welding had caused the um, arm to bow, uh, yeah. and <laughs> the net result was that it was bent. So, um, although I don't use this very often, I just uh, did a bit of love on the sides, and actually, I had to grind a little bit off here and a little bit off there. Um, because it, it, I couldn't take it back because I got it from an old boy that was giving up wood turning. So um, 
uh, that, that becomes a big joke in the Tuesday Turners group because I got a lot of my stuff from old oh, boys that have given up with Kay. I will go back to the platinum. You ripped him off again, Malcolm. Yeah. <laughs> Malcolm, a quick, uh, quick observation is that if you drop the V block and it lands on the little crossbar, they bend very easily. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, there you go. So uh, the small tool um, or bit sharpener, this is a Sorby rig, uh, which is the shiny bit, which you can buy. Um, I think other manufacturers make something similar. Um, nominally, you're supposed to only you, yeah, so you, Sorby to Sorby, but I, I, I successfully enough managed to put crown uh, tools on here. <laughs> This is just basically a, a bolt with a screw through it that you can mount these small cutters on. You can make your own. It's a stick with a hole and a screw thread in it. Um, but I'm not very good with metal work, so I don't actually... I yeah, it, it works with plywood. Just stick a screw through it. This is set to um, 80 degrees. So to sharpen that... They're uh, £9.50 to buy. Yeah. The tool okay. holder. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, yeah, so uh, it just basically run round, uh, and that gives you a really nice edge. Yeah. So that's a nice edge. At this end, you've got a clamp system with uh, a little slot through here, uh, so you can actually clamp. Um, I haven't got one to hand, but you can... Uh, some of these tools that have got like a pick uh, on it, um, you can slide your pick through and clamp it on and then you can just touch up the ends of the pick yeah that's what i meant by pick like, like that well you're so. going to talk about the bar at the bottom uh yeah uh so uh you get loads of nice abrasive crap flying around so every now and again you do need to clean out your holes so to speak um i don't use silicone i use wd-40 uh, uh i use i mean that's i'm just wiping it out there with nothing on it this is aluminium the one that you get from Sorby is steel. This actually starts to get slightly magnetized as a result of it being on or next to a magnetic plate, which means that you get more crap accumulating on it. Um, the, the shaft is quite rough when you get it new. It's not super, super smooth. Uh, so every now and again, I just take a bit of uh, steel wool, spray a bit of WD-40 on it, and then just go over it and uh, it comes up beautiful. Uh, and quick wipe off. So I've not wiped the inside of this just to see whether it goes on without a judder. Peasy peasy. Uh, this one I have wiped. Actually, I think the inside of the aluminium one is rougher than the inside of the steel one just from the milling. Uh, machining but it was trevor that was asking about that wasn't it about cleaning the shaft yeah and, and keeping it smooth um yeah thanks malcolm uh another, another question malcolm have you ever found a use for the little um grub screw no no uh well actually i think it's the same thread as goes in the record power cl4 chuck so i've got it as a spare out of the yeah i cannot understand what on earth anybody thinks that's going to do i mean the whole point of it is you've got to move it. Uh, and you couldn't tighten it up while it was on there anyway. No. I can only suspect that these, some of these bits of kit are made for more than one purpose. Uh, and it's the manufacturer just using it in different ways. Now, Ma Malcolm, Malcolm, could I just ask you a couple of questions? Uh, you may not be able to cover it this evening. It may be another time, but uh, I'll ask anyway, and you can say whether you'll be able to cover it. Um, I recently, uh, I originally had with my Pro Edge, which was the the one that came with all the bits and pieces, uh, it only had the one hole in the boss. So I've just recently purchased from Ed Oliver the one that's got the three holes, yeah. uh, which you had there. That's it, yeah. Um, and I understand that using that, you can do the long grind, and because uh, I think the long grind is is a, is the one that I favour. Um, I'm just so, about to go so, through that. Oh, you were okay, and I was also going to ask you, you the setting on the on the arm that you use that goes into that boss. 
Is that something that should remain the same? You shouldn't really adjust it because on the I'm, side, I'm I'm just about to go into that. Okay, I'm sorry, Roger. Uh, sorry, Malcolm. Thanks for that. That's all right. No, they're both good points, and they're quite important points. Um, so the angle, the uh, I haven't got a proper pro set. I've got a piece of wood. Um, the uh, di the dimensions for the uh, the pro set are fairly widely available. If you, I mean, I just borrowed it from the store, measured it, Nick wrote the dimensions down, and then came away and made it. But um, the protrusion is 46 mil, 64 mil, 86 mil, 113 mil. That's what the process is. And that is supposed to give you a 50, a 45, a 40, and a 35 degree bevel. All of that is using the standard boss and the one hole or the multi boss and the first hole are the same distance um but martin saban smith is the first person that articulated what i could not understand which is that as soon as you um move your leg further away because this bar also doesn't move further away the angle of approach fairly obviously when you think about it changes so you set your jig up for one angle and then you move it further away and you mm. move it further away and it steepens the grind so when uh, you know, I was watching on on the video about 50 degrees, 60 degrees and 70 degrees is because my brain had disconnected. But if at 50 degrees, you're in the first boss, the second one, it adds five degrees approximately. The third one adds another five degrees. So uh, if you set the distance uh, for a 50 degree one, you end up with a 60 degree one for the bevel grind. Yes, you end up with a longer grind, but you end up with a different angle to what you thought you were ending up with. Now, for me, for bowl gouges, that's perfect because I like my bowl gouges at 60 degrees. Uh, if I grind at 45, that ends up at 55, and that's also acceptable. And if I grind at 40, that ends up at 50. So that's also acceptable. So my bowl gouges are all ground slightly differently depending upon whether it's a universal bowl gouge to hog material out. I haven't done the 40-40 or whether it is a grind that I want to get right around the bottom. So um, when you first had the Pro Edge, it came with a Tormek patented, uh, copyrighted, whatever the bloody word is, jig. Uh, Tormek lost their patent rights a couple of years ago so Pro Edge, Sorby, started to make one of their own, which is a steel shaft instead of aluminium. All of their instructions say, whatever you do, do not alter the angle of the dangle, which is 120 degrees, and do not alter the distance of the uh, shaft with the collar, because the collar, they say, is only to be adjusted for Tormek. So the one they made has got no adjustment on the collar. So... When you pop that in, it makes life simpler. Uh, it just sits where it is. You can adjust this. It's not designed to be adjusted. You can adjust it. But the intention is, is that you get the grind that they tell you about in their book. There is a leaflet that actually even goes with the boss, the long boss, uh, that one, but you won't try and... But it shows you that you, in theory, can actually get a long angle, long grind, 40 degree bevel angle in that with a standard rig without adjusting it. And I do not believe you can. I do not believe it's possible. You can, you can do it by having this one and reading the UK workshop, Random Orbital Bob, uh, uh, worked this out about five years ago that if you actually uh, shorten, uh, slide the collar down so that you have 34 mil of collar showing, K 
keep the angle at 120 degrees, which on the Tormek is number three, and use a 75 mil protrusion, uh, then you can uh, get yourself a good grind. Take that off, so I'm not, not getting myself confused. The whole point of this grind is it's using the standard the standard boss hole. So I'm putting that in there and all right. So that now mates with the surface. So I'm just going to give that a quick dust up. So that is now, give or take, this is going to be about 35 to 40 degrees. And it's got a reasonable amount of sweat back on it. And it's a nice fingernail. Because um, when you actually try and follow Sorby's story, which is go for your is only relevant to spindle gouges if you want a spindle gouge ground at 40 degrees if you don't want a spindle gouge ground to 50 degrees then you're quite welcome to go with their suggestions now my problem is that some of my tools are getting too short and if i try and stick this into the 35 degree i'll run out all. that's such a long length there this is, you know, this is a foible. It's a bit of a weakness. If I stick <laughs> that in 40, this, this tool has got nothing left because I've almost ground this out <laughs> in the last few weeks. Um, it's one of my most favourite tools. I, I mourn the day that I can't use this. And then it'll, it'll become a V, a Vortex. Cindy Dodd's Vortex tool, and I'll sell it to somebody for a lot of money. Um, if you say, oh, 40 degrees, I've got my long bevel. So I can now stick that on there and everything is going to be lovely, isn't it? Except it isn't because it's not 40 degrees. This is ground to 40 degrees on here because I've ground it to 40 degrees. You probably won't be able to see easily on the camera, but this is nowhere near 40 degrees. It's 50 degrees. So if you want a spindle gouge ground to 30 or 40, you can't do it with the standard jig and a long grind. You have to have a short grind. If you use the short grind, then it will work. Um, unfortunately, that knocks. So I've got to go back to that one. So just to prove it, that's at 40. That is now touching. Mm. But it's giving me a slightly shorter grind. So basically, spindle gouges, use the short boss. Don't worry about the long boss. If you've only got the one that it came with, Use that and stick it on your 41, 40 degrees. Use the short boss, then you'll get a fingernail grind, but it won't be super duper long spindle gouge. It'll be reasonably long. Um, or play about with these 75 mil protrusion, 34 mil short on the shank. Uh, none of that is really relevant to bowl gouges because with the bowl gouges, the grind angles are. Um, you know, steeper. Quick interrupt. Did you you didn't alter your 120 degrees on that uh, on the Mark One? Uh, no, I didn't. Holder. Well, I did. I did. Yeah. And found it made very little difference apart from making my life very difficult um, because I found that the uh, oh, I'm on the camera. That's why I can't see. Uh, oh, yeah. I found that by um, slackening this off which i thought would reduce the rake yeah it just meant that it all got in the way with that, this being slacker the yeah. tool was just it, it didn't work yeah so i actually don't think changing the angle 
is uh, the thing. It's the length. As Sorby said, this is designed to emulate the, gr the grinds that they make in the factory. If you go off-piste and try and do longer-edge grinds, you kind of got to invent the wheel yourself. Um, mm. uh, but So there is a leaflet that comes with this, and they talk about um, the whole one, the whole one being able to give you a... Um, you know a short grind and what they talk about is the the angle of the grind on the top face because as you probably know sorby say when you're regrinding a tool in fact it's the same with any of them to be honest if you're regrinding it you choose what the top angle is that you think you're going to have and you flatten it this way on the grinding wheel to get your horseshoe and when you've got your horseshoe you then shape the out grind the outside down to meet the horseshoe and when you uh, see no light glinting around the edge shape of the horseshoe that's when you've got it sharp uh and sorby suggests that it, you grind the top rake between go from like 45 degrees to 25 degrees to 15 degrees and if this this longer grind the top they suggest is about 15 degrees and I, I don't do that. I don't do the horseshoe bit because I don't think I, you, you tend to need to have to do it. But you can. Certainly learned quite a lot. Yeah, I'm in a bit of a dilemma now. I'm a, wondering whether to um, go with Pro Edge as opposed to Tormek now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're sure he hasn't already bought it for you for Christmas? Not that I know of, no. <laughs> for speed, simplicity and an easy life, even though... I know Viva's had challenges, but I don't know what they are. You, you, you can't really knock the Pro Edge. I mean, it's under 400 quid to get most of your get bits of gear. It might be 410 or 20 if you buy all of the optional accessories. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper, actually. Um, uh, yeah, okay, you've got consumables. Uh, your belts will wear out, but at three or four quid a go, as opposed to Sorby at six or seven quid a go... Um, and the fact that a one, a flat one twenty will last you six months, you know, um, mm. in and out with a few other belts. And uh, you do a lot more tur turning than I do. Oh, like, <laughs> I haven't recently with all. all... No. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> no, funny thing. that. That's the thing. I, I do a lot of research before I bought my Pro Edge, and I de determined that I'll be using it for ninety five percent of the time or more for sharpening gouges and, and skews perhaps but um mm. anything like plain blades which i used to do by hand anyway with a the roller thing um and chisels you know standard wood chisels i would continue to do that if i needed to and i couldn't be bothered to buy those particular jigs so for the tormec um i think it was double the price and it just everyone seemed to say it just took a long time to you know to sharpen up and, and i tend to do to, to sharpen fairly regularly you know when i'm you know three or four times perhaps in a few hours sometimes just to give it a you know a little touch up on the edge and it, it's dead quick for that and that's what i like about it i used to um well i got trisac belts for my uh, pro edge and uh i used to put all my uh, turning tools on there and get a real mirror like finish on the uh, the bevel until one of the demonstrations i went to the demonstrator said you really don't want to do that because by getting a really really sharp shiny bevel you're actually making it bristle um you don't really need to go past a 120 uh because the grooves acts acts actually like a, a sawtooth on a saw when you're <laughs> cutting at an angle you know you're actually shearing the wood um but with a with a really highly polished uh, bevel it is uh, so sharp that it's actually brittle and it breaks off uh, fairly fairly easily so it goes blunter quicker the uh, the sharper it is i must admit i would love to see the edge under a microscope because i've got to say i'm not at all convinced by this argument about you know 120 stays sharper than uh, ground at a higher grit because for me that's counterintuitive I found the Trizac belts useful uh, because they are a lot slower to 
to sharpen, if you see what I mean. And for my mic, some a couple of micro gouges that I've got, I trashed the edges <clears throat> very quickly on a 120 belt because I just couldn't be that delicate. So I had to use a, uh, I think it was a 1200 Trizac, and I could just sharpen it much more slowly. Has anybody splashed out on a diamond belt? Well, I was just going to ask, yes. What's the feeling about the diamond belt? It comes down to how much you turn and uh, how many belts you go through. Um, the price of a diamond belt is uh, you can buy an awful lot of uh, standard ceramic belts, uh, which will give you years worth of turning before you ever get around to uh, getting up th to the value of a diamond belt. So it's really just personal choice. There's some technical stuff in there as well, though. Um, we, and I agree, Chris, what you said. There's some um, and having done some research about it, because I thought, well, maybe I could think about a diamond belt. But the, 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 the comment is, the reason CBN cubic boron nitride is used on, funnily enough, CBN wheels, uh, is because when you're grinding, sharpening, high-speed steel, CBN does not do what diamond does when it gets hot and stressed. Diamond decays into carbon. And the black dust you get if you're having a diamond wheel or diamond belt that's running too hot is because it's the diamonds actually degrading to carbon. CBN on CBN plated wheels for high speed grinders, they're not diamond on high speed grinders because they wouldn't work. The CBN works on a high speed grinder because it doesn't have the same characteristic. So diamond Tormek wet cool, slow, probably beautiful. Diamond on the um, Sorby, I'm The discussion raged well into the night, but that's the end of the recording. Cheers, folks. Hope you enjoyed it.